Hi guys, so I hope you guys are doing pretty great. Uh, well, today what I'm gonna show you guys is how to create a greeting app on TK Inter. Uh, this is basically what it's gonna look like uh, as a final outlook. It's something very basic and very beginner friendly. And it's basically something that I wanna show you guys on how to use TK Inter and its many features and how it's very useful for many personal projects. So without further ado, uh, let's run it up and I'll show you guys what basically you should be expecting from this video. So this is a before taste of what we can expect from this code that we're gonna create. Uh, right here, your app is gonna run and you're gonna have an entry field where you can enter whatever name you wanna use. And then as soon as you click on the click me button, it's gonna greet you. And this app is basically just gonna teach you a lot of the, uh, the things that TK Inter can offer you. So from what you can see, you can put whatever name you want. And this is what we're gonna build. Okay, so here comes our first program using TK Inter. Before we even start, I want to talk about the fact that TK Inter is built into Python and uh, you can you can use it as soon as you install Python on your Windows device. Um, over here is actually their own uh, installation installation documentation. You can find it on tkdocs.com. And I encourage you guys to usually do this. As a programmer, uh, a lot of the job is going through documentation for languages, frameworks, and whatever you're using on your project and thoroughly reading it and applying it on your project. So over here, we'd see that as soon as we got Python on Windows, we can, we're ready to go. Same thing can be applied on Mac. When you, uh, when you install Python on, on your Mac OS, you, you can uh, go instantly and start using it. So what I got right here in front of me is simply my uh, PyCharm application. I started a new project. Uh, so on my file, uh, as always with Python, you simply just have to, <clears throat> import the necessary uh, uh, the necessary files that you're going to be using, the library. So I'm going to import TK enter as TK. That's usually the way to do it. It's uh, it's a lot easier to write TK than TK enter. And from TK enter, we're going to import TTK. Now, TTK is actually just uh, a lot of widgets that come with the GUI application. Uh, you're going to have buttons, labels, frames, and uh, many more th more things that are going to make your GUI application a lot more user friendly. So uh, it is very important to use it, and uh, I'll show you how how that can influence your your program by a lot. Um, further on, in order to test that we truly installed everything, one can use the following line: tk dot under underscore test. And if you want to check, this is also in the documentation. In order for you to test, uh, this should give you the Python command prompt. From the prompt, enter these two commands. You get these two commands, and then this will show you if TK interest truly installed on your on your device or not. So if we run this application, there you go. You have a GUI application that is already ready to go, and this definitely shows to you that you got TK Inter on your laptop. And you can see this. You can resize it. You can play with it. Click me, and then you quit. So that's the first step for you to know that you have TK Inter. So now that we checked that uh, TK Inter is indeed installed with our Python uh, application, uh, we're gonna just go ahead and create our, our main window for our GUI application. Uh, to do so, we're gonna use the TK class that is installed that comes with the TK Inter package. So I'm gonna create an object of the TK class. I call it root. Uh, I see a lot of people call it root. I was taught by calling it root, but you could definitely call it app or anything else, but uh, I prefer using root because that's what's most recognizable in uh, in most people that teach Python. <clears throat> and uh, when we run our code, we realize that we finish with the exit code zero, which uh, usually means that um, our co code run well and there's no issues with it, but I still do not see a window. And uh, this is actually very normal. You need to call the, uh, a method in order for that to happen, and that is main loop. Now, why is this method so important? When we run it, we see that our windows here, it's easy to play with, it's resizable, and we're ready to go. Main loop is actually extremely important because it tells Python to run the TK inter event loop. And event loop is actually a very strong word here. This method listens for events, such as buttons, button clicks, or key presses, and blocks any code that comes after, after it from running. Now, this is important. Because since we know that our graphic user interface is basically something that the user is going to interface with, right? Obviously, it's it's uh, in, in the name. Um, 
our user is going to have some interactions with it. So it's going to click in a button. It's going to write inside of it if you have an entry widget, or it's going to it's going to interact with it. So that's events that a loop is con- continuously running and listening to. So whatever code that you have around here, it's going to be played repeatedly. And the loop is going to keep listening for events for, for whatever the user is doing. So this is your main loop for your application. But whatever is printed outside of the loop or whatever, it's not, I said printed, but whatever code is outside of the loop will only run once the loop is closed. So we're going to do a little test right here to actually display this, uh, display this inside of loop. So when we run our application, bam, there we have it. Our application is up and running. This printed into our Python Python uh, terminal, obviously, uh, sh- showing that we are indeed inside of the loop. But now our loop is constant, continuously running and listening for events. So if I had a button and I clicked on it, something would happen depending on what I want my code to do, right? But as soon as I close it, we are outside of the loop, and uh, once your your loop is done, it, the event uh, the event GUI is no longer playing, is no longer running. Sorry, no longer running, and then whatever code that is outside of the loop can be used. So, um, I'm going to give you an example of how this can be useful. If you have, uh, for example, uh, something that gathers data and it requires a GUI, so, so someone that is inputting data. So, like I run my my GUI, and then. Uh, I click on something, the user needs to enter some data, and then they, they, print an, they press another button that says send. You close this, and if you store the data somewhere, you could actually use it later on on a backend uh, program that you're going that, that to code for yourself. Obviously, this is just an example. It's not what we're going to do today. So this is pretty much it. This is how we create the main window. Now, by having our window up and running, uh, you saw that I can play around with it a lot. I can I can change its size. I can really just mess around with it. And uh, this can be very bad, by the way, because say you you have a lot of buttons that are in here or are a lot of widgets, and you don't want people to actually mess with it. Like by moving it like that, it could be a little bit awkward, and it kind of makes your project a lot more sloppy. So how can we actually set it up so that? we have a specific size for our window. And uh, one way to do it is with the geometry method. So once again, since, since it involves your, your window, you're going to use geometry. Right here, you're going to use the dot operator and call geometry. And what do you see here? You actually need to put uh, a, uh, you, you actually need to pass a value into geometry and that value is going to be a string. And basically you put your width times your height over here. And when I run this, bam, there we have it. 300 by 400 pixels. That's my window. But then again, I still have the option of people playing with it and moving it around, right? So once again, what if 300 by 400 is ideal for my window? I could make it bigger. You're still going to see my buttons. But then when I move it smaller, it could be even more awkward, right? Because uh, what's going to happen with everything that I'm displaying? To fix that, uh, there's another method that is u- that is uh, useful for you. So y- it is the min size method. So I'm going to call it with my object once again, min size. And then what do you see here? The inputs, you have to input the width and the height. And that's basically what your window is going to be like. So width, I'm going to put 400. And then height, we're going to put 400. We're going to make a perfect square here. And of course, I'm going to comment out this line because we can't run both at the same time. And there we have it. Okay, 400 by 400. Uh, it's excellent. So now, uh, what can I do? I can make it bigger. I, I can still display my graphic user interface here. But if I want to crush it, no, I can't move around with it. And you can see we can even make it full screen. That's still available. And then we go back to 400 by 400. Okay. But then again, it could look even awkward when you're always making it bigger, always messing with the size of your window. How can we actually fully control that our window is going to be 400 by 400 and it's going to stay like that forever? That's what we want as a as a as a project owner, um, and you can do that actually. You could do that by simply using the resizable method. And of course, you already know the drill. Resizable. You call it through the your dot operator for the with your uh, TK class object, and then. Once again, you see that here we, we, we need to input two values, right? For width and for height. But 
realize that this is not exactly uh, it's not exactly a, a, a size in pixels but it, this is more boolean values and it's either true or false so I'm gonna set width to true and our height is gonna be false and what does that do so basically right here resizable my width is true meaning that I can play around with the width of my window I won't be able to make it shorter than 400 because I'm using the min size method but if I use my height, you see, the option's not even there. I can't even move it around. I can't make it bigger or smaller because I set that as false, right? <laughs> Sorry for that. Now, if I want a window that is only 400 by 400, I could simply just use the combination of min size and resizable. Well, there you have it. And no longer, we cannot move it. We cannot even make it full screen because our, our main loop is is going through these events and it realizes that our minimum size is 400 by 400 and we can't resize it, right? So the combination of resizable and one of these two methods is actually gonna make your window a fixed size. And if we comment this out and we can even use geometry, we're gonna have the same result, 300 by 400 and you can't change the size. And that's basically how you control the size of your main window. So thank you for making it all the way through the end of this video. Uh, if you liked what I showed you, don't forget to click like, subscribe, and click that notification bell if you want to hear more from me. Uh, if you didn't like it, please feel free to leave a comment. Let me know what I can improve in order to engage with my users a lot more. And don't forget, guys, you need to practice on your own. Try to play around with it and do your own thing with this program. Thank you very much. See you next time.